Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and I'm going to be watching Silicon Valley to see how scientifically accurate it is. I have been to Silicon Valley and I've seen it all. It is a mecca for engineers. Every company you can think of is out there. The startups are ridiculous and more and more happen all the time. In true Silicon Valley fashion, I have a black turtleneck and I'm really excited to see how this video is. Like, I've heard nothing but really good reviews on this show and let's get started. This place is unbelievable. Fucking gooey bib, man. Those guys built a mediocre piece of software that might be worth something someday and now they live here. Money flying all over Silicon Valley, but none of it ever seems to hit us. What the hell? Uh, that is how pretty much every engineer feels, and yeah, there's the, the amount of money over there is crazy. Just, just you get to see executives and CEOs of like Google and Apple just like literally down the street from you. It's crazy. Hello! Woo! I got seven words for you. I love. Ghoulie Bibs Integrated Multi-Platform Functionality! Yeah! No. <laughs> That's... No. Now look, Richard, if you want to live here, mm -hmm. you've got to deliver. I can't have dead weight at my incubator, okay? Either that or show some promise for fuck's sake. Like Nip Alert. That is actually... Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone that extreme like that, but it's not at all uncommon for Silicon Valley engineers, like multiple of them, to be all living in the same house or same apartment. And that's purely for financial reasons. The cost of living in the Bay Area is ridiculous. And it's not going down anytime soon. Everything over there is just becoming more and more expensive because you're just bringing in more and more engineers who have more and more money. That's just, and the, the cycle will never stop. When I sold my company, Aviato, I wanted to give back. That's why I started this place to do something big, to make a difference. You know, like Steve. Uh, uh, Jobs or Wozniak? Uh, Steve Jobs or Steve? No, I heard you. Wh which one? Jobs. Well, I mean, Jobs was a poser. He didn't even write code. <laughs> I mean, you? I wouldn't call Steve Jobs a poser, but the second part is actually true. Um, Steve Jobs does not have a bit of computer science knowledge anywhere. Uh, Steve Wozniak was actually the one who coded everything that Apple has. But we really want to help you with your site. W what's it called? Uh, Pied Piper. Dude, sounds amazing. Yeah. Why don't you shoot it over to us and we'll give it a look. Maybe we can help. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll t I mean, it's, it's always uh, good to have more eyes on it. So let's say we sent it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you're making fun of me. Dude. No, 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 you are. No, no Ricky. Ricky, Ricky, come man. back. It's, it's actually rich. Some... Engineers are not that dickish to each other in general. Um... Gates, Ellison, Jobs, Dell, all dropped out of college. Silicon Valley is the cradle of innovation because of dropouts. Hold on. Before everyone just starts dropping out of college, uh, maybe have an idea first and get to the point where you cannot work on your idea and go to class at the same time. And it's already, there's a lot more to it than just dropping out of college. Wait a sec. What is this file size? 1.2 megabytes? No way. Wow. That doesn't sound at all downgraded. The file size is like half. Look how fast this searches. So that is actually correct. When Because the file size is halved, it's probably a compressed file, and that means that there's a lot less space that you're searching to get what you want. So that's why it's faster. Holy shit. How did it find a match that fast? It's like it's searching compressed files. Hey, look at that. Look at that Weissman score, 2.89. Hey, where have you two been? We're playing the multi-channel router team in five minutes. Okay, how the hell did he do this? And the compression is totally lossless. Okay. And he somehow figured out a way to do a search on a compressed data space. Holy shit. Yeah, and I don't think he even realizes what he has here. He's using it for some... I was going to wonder the same thing. I'm like, you're searching 
Like, how exactly are you searching this? Like, against, against what are you searching it? What do you got? Okay, here it is. Bit soup. It's like alphabet soup, but it's ones and zeros. Oh, come on, Instead man. Don't, don't do that. Because <laughs> it's binary. You know, binary is just ones and zeros. Yeah, I know what binary is. Jesus Christ, I memorized the hexadecimal times tables when I was 14 writing machine code. Okay? Ask me what 9 times F is. It's 75. Binary is a system of numbers that computers will use, and it's a 1 or a 0. A 1 is on and a 0 is off. Actually, if you look at your computer that you're watching this from right now, if you're watching this from a computer, your on and off switch actually shows a binary of 1 or a 0. So it's just a 1 and it's a 0 around it. And that's why the symbol is the way it is. Because you click it once, it's on, click it twice, off. Hexadecimal is a system that uses 16 different, or it's a system that uses 16 different symbols. It goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 9, and then it goes to the letter A, which is a value of 10. And that goes on to F, which is 15. Yeah, which is 15. So what he's saying, which is uh, 9 times F or F times 9, you would do 9 times 15, which is the value for F, which is 135, and that, because that number is in base 10, so that needs to be converted to hexadecimal, which, which after throwing it into Google, because I don't have them all memorized since I was 14, is 87, or if you want to show it properly, it's 0x87. You can actually see hexadecimal notation if you're working in some sort of software where you can identify colors. If you go to like red, for example, it might has it like 0x00, FF, DJ, whatever those letters are, actually that is hexadecimal notation that you're looking at for that specific color. I don't know where Flevendi 5 comes from. Nobody talks like that. And I don't know if you meant like F5 or F, I don't know, but either way, that is wrong. And um, I'm sorry, but that's, no one talks like that. I don't even know what Flevendi 5 means. That's weird. They always travel in groups of five. These programmers, there's always a tall, skinny white guy, short, skinny Asian guy, fat guy with a ponytail, some guy with crazy facial hair, and then an East Indian guy. It's like they trade guys until they all have the right group. That is absolutely 100% completely accurate. Welcome to Silicon Valley. We see people like you all the time. Really? Yes. Let's just have to make this decision by tomorrow. Yeah. You know, a while back, we had a guy in here in almost the exact same situation. Take the money or keep the company. I don't think it's almost ever the case. No one's ever going to expect you to make a $10 million decision by tomorrow. They're going to give you some time to think about it. Would you be interested in a device that links up to your smartphone and it keeps track of your vitals and it tells you, even before it's happening, whether you're having a panic attack or an actual heart attack? Yeah, that sounds great. You would, right? Yeah. Okay, that's great news because it's still in prototype phase right now, but my startup partners and I are looking for investors, like today. So will you please let me know, I'm gonna give you my number, if you do end up taking that $10 million because we could really make the world a better place. So one of the sad truths about Silicon Valley is everyone is always trying to pitch you the next idea, the next website, the next app. It's there 24 seven and you can't escape it, but that's, that's also part of the appeal of living in Silicon Valley is that you're always around people who are coming up with new ideas and they're just throwing millions of dollars around back and forth. Like this guy just said, $10 million, take it now. Richard, hi, Monica. I work with Peter Gregory, met outside the TED. Yeah, I remember you. What, uh, how'd you know I was here? Peter Gregory's invested in a company that uses GPS and phones to track people. That's creepy. You don't know the half of it. Mm -hmm. Neither does Congress. Yeah, is that legal? I don't think that is without their consent. But you know, it's probably already made right now. Do you even realize the impact that a compression this good could have on the world? Getting any file on your mobile phone in an instant, navigation data for self-driving cars, mobile medical imagery, all transmitting with no quality loss. This is game changing. I'm not sure how they could ever transfer anything with no quality loss. I mean, not to say that it's not like perfectly done, it's just whenever you are working on any sort of technology or anything like that, keep in mind that we are imperfect humans 
building imperfect tools to take imperfect measurements, I mean, the chances of you getting anything 100% is zero. I just wanna say, uh, I'd like for this company to just be different than Huli and Gooly Bib and all the rest, you know? Like, let's not turn this into a corporate cult you know, with bike meetings and voluntary retreats that are actually mandatory. Mm -hmm. Claiming to make the world a better place all the time. This show is really cool. Um, I'm actually curious to see how how this whole new company plays out. And even though it's a fictional guy, I wish him all the best luck. And yeah, I'm, I liked it a lot. I actually want to watch more. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, let me know in the comments what you think, and until next time, stay fresh, stay golden.